Who were the Sadducees and what was their deal? Welcome to another episode of Bible Tidbits powered by LifeWord. Today we are continuing a six-part mini-series that will look at the six groups formed between the Old and the New Testaments, five of which are mentioned in the Gospels and Acts. They are the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, the Zealots, the Sicarii, and the Essenes. Today, we're covering the Sadducees. Right off the bat, you need to know that the Sadducees were much smaller in number than the Pharisees. However, they were wealthy, wielded considerable political power, and represented not just the class of priests, but the high priest, as they were in charge of the temple in Jerusalem and all temple services. Many people believe the name Sadducee comes from the Hebrew word to be righteous or sadak. Ancient historian Josephus makes a special note in his history that the Sadducees were power hungry, arrogant, and rude to common people. They were not nice guys. In many ways, the Sadducees were polar opposite to the Pharisees. That's probably why we see them clashing so often in the Gospels. Unlike the Pharisees, they rejected all of what we call the Old Testament, except for five books, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They were what we would call deists today. They believed that God was inactive in history and didn't care about people or any other parts of his creation. They didn't believe in angels nor demons. They rejected the resurrection of the dead and they did not believe in an afterlife. To complete their rejection of everything Pharisee, they also rejected the oral law, those extra laws added by the Pharisees to the law of Moses. As mentioned before, the Sadducees wielded considerable political power since they were not only wealthy, but also controlled many high offices in Judaism. The Sadducees worked overtime to keep peace in Jerusalem and Judea with the Roman Empire. Honestly, they didn't really care who was in charge as long as they were close to who was in charge. This group leaned heavily into Greek ideas and culture. That's why they rejected so many theological beliefs that are taught in Scripture. They were trying to be like those who were in power. Why did they do this? Well, first, peace is a good thing. But further than that, life was good for them. They were rich and they had power. So they certainly didn't want to do anything to upset their position. This was the reason that they were anti-Jesus. Honestly, they didn't care too much either way about Jesus at first. He wasn't even on their radar. It wasn't until the following of Jesus grew large and many people began to see him as the Messiah that they grew concerned and joined into the plot to discredit Jesus and ultimately kill him. If you remember from the Gospels, Jesus has run through a show trial before he was ultimately killed by Rome. This show trial was held in the Jewish Supreme Court called the Sanhedrin. Though there have been meetings of elders dating back to the founding of Israel based on command in Numbers 11:16, this high court was formed between the Old Testament and the New Testament, what we call the intertestamental period. The word Sanhedrin isn't even Hebrew. It's Greek for assembly. To further make you scratch your head, the command in Numbers 11:16 calls for a 70-person council. The Sanhedrin had 72. I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. The Sanhedrin met every day in the temple except for the Sabbath days and holy festivals. The Sadducees had the majority of seats in the Sanhedrin and even controlled the person who presided over the court, the high priest. Now the reason that I pointed out earlier that Jesus' trial was a show trial was because even though they tried him, they couldn't sentence him. They didn't have the power of death. Only the Romans did. I tell you this to illustrate that yes, the Sanhedrin had power, but only the power given to it by the Roman Empire. Now do you see why the Sadducees were so keen on keeping those Romans happy? Both the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees came to an end in 70 AD when the Romans sacked Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. To help you compare how all of these groups thought, I made this helpful chart. Now I know it looks like the political compass, but don't think of it as the same. The axes are different. The left axis is how politically active the groups were, and the bottom axis is how much they favored a Jewish or Greek culture. As you can see from the chart, the Sadducees definitely leaned towards Greek culture and thought and were very politically involved. Unlike the Pharisees, the Sadducees' impact is negligible on modern Judaism. So, with all that said, what's something that you learned in today's video on the Sadducees? Let me know in the comments below. It really helps me know how to make the content better in the future, and the engagement lets YouTube know that this is a video worth promoting. Also, if you have any ideas for future videos in the Bible Tidbit series, be sure to drop those in the comments as well. 
Now to end each of the videos in this mini-series, I want to give some brief application to our lives based on what we learned about each group. Some of these will be easier than others. Today I want to talk about the love of money. You know when Jesus overturned tables in the temple? That was against the Sadducees. You see, there was money to be made at the temple, and they were experts at it. Some of the most lavish and opulent houses found today by archaeologists in Jerusalem belong to Sadducees. The Sadducees didn't think God cared about temple sacrifices. Remember, they thought God was an absentee landlord. So why did they oversee the temple? Money. They loved money. They wanted to make money off of true believers who were coming to the temple. That's why Jesus lost it and trashed the place. He said to them, The scriptures declare, My temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Den of thieves because they were ripping people off. And it was supposed to be a house of prayer because God does care about our life and He does want to hear from us. But they didn't pray because they didn't think God was listening. Did you know that the scripture never condemns money? The scripture only condemns the love of money. Look, we need money to live and to do many of the things that God has called us to do. The problem isn't wealth or riches, but our heart. What is it that we're truly chasing? Is it God or is it money? If you go back to Matthew 6 and you look at the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' teaching on money directly connects to his teaching about God caring. Why? Because when we don't think God cares, we idolize money. We go to it for purpose and for security. But when we truly believe that God cares and he's in his proper place and money is in its proper place, we see that God is the only thing that gives us true security and that money is just a tool that God entrusts to us. Bottom line, God is a much better master than money. So love God, not money. Hey, I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, would you please consider sharing it? And be sure to subscribe so that you can catch the next Bible Tidbits video when it drops on Thursday. Before we go, I want to remind you that LifeWord has a huge catalog of Christian programming that will keep you encouraged and strengthen your faith. Look, times are uncertain. So if you want to listen and watch content that's biblically sound, head over to LifeWord.org. They've got that kind of content for days. We'll see you next time. Grace and peace. Hey, you guys want to hear a dad joke before you go? Okay, come here. So the Sadducees, they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. That bummed them out. You might even say that was why they were sad, you see. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>